This is Cole, once a driver of the Industrial Revolution, now a driver of climate change. Whatever your opinion of the stuff, it was an important part of Missouri's geological and economic history. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and especially focus on the surprising role that coal played in shaping Missouri's landscape. Coal is formed when plant material is deposited, compressed, and heated, transforming it into a burnable rock. If this seems difficult to imagine, consider grill charcoal, another example of woody material being transformed into a superior fuel by heat and time. Missouri coal has the same heritage as its more famous cousin in Appalachia, forming during the Pennsylvanian when swamps filled with lush vegetation were widespread. One bit of evidence for this comes in the form of fossilized logs preserved in the same geological formations as the coal, such as this impressive example right here. Coal, as seen here, can often be confused with shale, as seen here, particularly as they often occur very near one another. Shale tends to be much platier, like this, like the pages of a book, and it's usually pretty dull in color. In contrast, coal is a lot chunkier, and it's often a bit shinier. So compare that to this. Now Missouri coal in particular tends to have a lot of sulfur in it. So you often see bits of yellow streaking and deposits of the mineral pyrite or iron sulfide in it. Many people would be surprised to learn that fully one third of Missouri is underlain by coal beds and that coal mining was once a major economic activity here. Coal mining in Missouri began in the 1840s and really took off after the Civil War as Missouri cities began to industrialize and demand for cheap local energy grew. Mining took place underground into the early 20th century, ranging from small local digs to much larger corporate operations. Underground mining generally dropped vertical shafts down to the level of the coal, then dug networks of tunnels sideways to extract it, sometimes at multiple levels. But where coal deposits were particularly shallow, mines could also simply tunnel sideways into hillsides with no need for a vertical drop. Most Missouri coal seams were thin. Mining generally involved seams from 14 to 42 inches thick. By the 1930s, this approach was giving way to surface mining, in which large machinery was used to scrape away vast quantities of soil and rock to reach shallow coal deposits. This was cheaper, faster, and safer than underground mining, but it came with increased environmental costs, including acid mine drainage, dangerous high walls, hazardous water impoundments, dangerous mine openings, barren spoils, coal waste, soil erosion, and stream sedimentation. Starting in the 1970s, state laws began to regulate the planning, impact, and remediation of surface mines, altering their practicality and economics. The Federal Clean Air Act, which restricted sulfur emissions, was another serious blow to Missouri's high sulfur coal. Underground mining didn't disturb the land surface much, but it did tend to produce large piles of tailings, the waste rock left over from extraction and processing. Many of these are still present in the landscape and stand out as distinctly unnatural features, as in this Google Maps terrain view image of a three mine cluster just south of Lexington, Missouri. There's no natural process in Missouri that would have created isolated hillocks like this. This mine and tailings pile could well be one of those seen in the terrain view at left. But far more dramatic are the scars left by large-scale surface mining, which produced massive amounts of tailings and large open pits scattered across the landscape. Here's what happened at one location in central Missouri's Boone County, where strip mining from 1963 to 1972 transformed a peaceful agricultural valley into an unrecognizable maze of tailings piles and narrow winding pits. At this site, portions of which were later acquired by the state and transformed into Finger Lakes State Park and Rocky Fork Lakes Conservation Area. You can see a certain stabilization and revegetation happening over time. But decades after mining ceases, the affected areas remain plainly recognizable in aerial photography and landscape data. One of the most common features is a dense scattering of unnaturally shaped lakes. A good example is this scene from Henry County. Natural lakes are very rare in Missouri, and such mining scars are easily distinguishable from normal farm ponds or other man-made impoundments as they tend to be narrow, angular, and don't follow natural drainage patterns. They also tend to be surrounded by dense young trees, as the landscape is too degraded for agricultural or other uses. Keep in mind that the soil, developed over thousands of years, is long gone. 
These patterns are easily recognizable once you know what to look for. Another excellent example of mining scars on the terrain comes from the Minden Mines area of far western Missouri. Here the strip mining extended right to the edges of Prairie State Park, one of the few and best remaining parcels of tall grass prairie anywhere in the state. You may have noticed a particularly distinct ribbed pattern common in many surface mining areas. This relates to the practice of extending the original cut using a series of further narrow cuts that progress sideways into the face, like a printer moving down a page, leaving behind regular ridges of leftover material that form what one DNR report described as a series of giant furrows resembling a gigantic plowed field. Most coal extraction in Missouri occurred in five distinct zones in the western and northern parts of the state. Coal usually doesn't show up at the surface here, and even where it does, it's highly erodible and easily gets slumped over or otherwise obscured. It's actually very difficult to find at the surface. Now, unlike coal itself, the traces of coal mining were much more widespread, and these left recognizable features all across the Missouri landscape that you can learn to identify all over the place. Most ex-mining areas in Missouri are on private land, and thus are really difficult to access and understand. A rare but great exception is Rocky Fork Lakes Conservation Area and Finger Lake State Park in central Missouri's Boone County. Here you can hike and even paddle through an old mining landscape full of lakes, deep cuts, rubble piles, and utterly messed up landscape. At this location you can particularly see a nice coal seam. At the top we have a layer of sandstone. Below that there's a section of shale, very platy black stuff. But below that is a thick seam of coal. All of this here is Missouri coal. Nice, chunky, big, breaks apart really easily, it's kind of shiny, and kind of all the yellowish brown staining is iron and sulfur and other the impurities that made this such a dirty coal to burn. You know, look at my hands. But this landscape was a great place to actually walk around and see what coal mining did to the landscape and what it looks like afterwards as the landscape tries to recover. Hey Cole, look at this. I just pulled this piece of coal off and I'm pretty sure this is a plant fossil inside. You can see the impression of it over here. Oh wow, look, that's coming off in a piece. That is some old vegetative matter. Isn't that cool? So here's another example of the mining landscape in Missouri. This kind of narrow lake with a bunch of steep rubbly hills surrounding it really isn't a natural landscape that forms in Missouri. This has to be human influence. The landscape behind me is really rugged and kind of messed up, kind of ratty vegetation trying to regrow. As we pan around, you'll see a lot of steep slopes. There's another lake down there. That doesn't belong here. And as we walk up the slope, we're going to enter some real evidence of mining, which is a stand of pine trees. Now, in this part of central Missouri, there are no native pine trees, although down in the Ozarks, there are native shortleaf pines. But up here, what we're looking at are white pines, and there's a big stand of absolutely beautiful white pines up in here. But these were planted as part of the post-mining reclamation efforts. They don't belong here naturally. They do a great job of stabilizing and holding soil in, but they're not a native tree. And if we look down at the ground here, we'll see more evidence of this. So here is a big old white pine cone, and here's a broken off branch. You can count the needles on these. There's the right number, five needles per cluster. These are white pines. So when we look at this landscape again, we're seeing this steep, rubbly landscape, these lakes all around, this kind of unusual vegetation, invasive plants, planted white pines, and all this is a sign that this is a human landscape. But this isn't just a story of destruction. Although we probably shouldn't consider the landscape here natural, there's a lot of nature here. Birders visit every year to enjoy birds like the whippoorwill, the chuckwill's widow, and the woodcock. And the pines behind me, while not native, still host another rare bird species that visits occasionally, the red crossbill. In a lot of ways, this landscape could be considered what's called a novel ecosystem, something that's developed from a combination of human influence and natural processes, a mix of non-native and native species, creating a very new entity. In that sense, we could almost consider coal as having been both destructive and creative in setting up this novel ecosystem that we can now appreciate and enjoy for what it is. Missouri coal once represented a form of local energy independence, echoing today's hopes for new sources like wind and solar. Small-scale mines provided rural communities with a high-quality fuel that didn't have to be shipped from far away, while larger mines provided thousands of jobs for residents and immigrants alike. 
local coal gave many Missouri cities a significant boost during their post-Civil War industrial development. There's even an argument that coal played a role in conserving Missouri's forests by providing an alternative fuel source. Against these positives must be balanced the negatives of mining accidents, long-term landscape scarring, and both local and global pollution. Coal mining is no longer a significant activity in Missouri, but understanding its legacy helps us better appreciate how it shaped the state's landscape and history.